Welcome to our last video of, the, of this year for Battle for the Belt. This is episode 33. Again, I'm Laura Lindsay. I'm the soybean agronomist at Ohio State, and I'm with um, Ashler Ortez, who's the corn agronomist at Ohio State. So we're, we're happy to be wrapping up uh, Battle for the Belt this year. Just as a quick recap of what we have been working on this year, 2023, we had uh, five planting dates that were spread or replicated in three different locations. We have uh, the Northwest Ag Research Station in Wood County, Ohio. We had the Worcester Campus uh, location in Wayne County, Ohio, and the Western Ag Research Station in Clark County, Ohio. We looked at a range of five planting dates with approximately two weeks uh, intervals between each planting date. Uh, we see that on the earliest side, we had April 12th, April 14th, April 13th, two week increments roughly, depending on weather. And uh, we finish up around June 8th, June 21st, and June 8th for the last location. So that's, that's what we have been doing this year. So this was a really interesting growing season. Every year, of course, is interesting for, for various reasons. Uh, these pictures are from the Western Ag Research Station in Clark County. Uh, the corn and soybeans pictured here were planted on April 13th, but this picture was taken on May 2nd. Uh, when I went out to this field on May 2nd, it was completely saturated. I couldn't even walk uh, because my boots were just covered with mud. Uh, and it was about 38 degrees and almost spitting snow. So uh, very, very poor growing conditions to kick off the growing season really across the state. What we see on display now is uh, one picture of a soybean seedling in the Worcester site. Uh, that picture was uh, taken after we did some scouting, early season scouting. We were concerned about low stands on the early planting date of soybeans and just normal stands on the same planting date for corn. On the Petri dish on the side is uh, some of the uh, disease analysis that was uh, being conducted for these samples that were collected in the field. Those results are going to be compiled and will, make, will be made available here in the, uh, into the near future. So at the Western Ag Research Station and the other two locations as well, uh, we went from that really wet, cool, and pivoted to very dry very quickly. Um, so pictured here, you see our first planting date um, on June 7th. Uh, so coming up and there, there's some green plants and I stand, uh, but the, the soybeans planted uh, about four weeks later on, on May 11th were planted in the really dry conditions. And so even though the first set of planting dates had those cool wet conditions, our optimum planting dates, or what you would think would be optimum around mid-May, were not optimum planting dates because it was extremely dry at all three of our locations. That dryness certainly impacted corn as well. I remember being at the Northwest Station right around that time, and uh, certainly there were clearly cracks in those yep. soils that uh, that crop was needing the, the water uh, at that point. Here on the picture, uh, we have a range of uh, ears collected from the different, from the five planting dates and the four different relative maturity hybrids. Uh, shorter season maturities on the left, longer season maturities on the right of each subset. We have four relative maturities, so we have four ears for each uh, planting date. And this brings us to the point uh, we were just talking what do we think that is going to be yielding best in 2023? And uh, this picture is, uh, only represents Wood County, Ohio. That's uh, uh, over there at that particular station. And uh, the conversation here is, uh, in, in my case, for corn, we, I will say, I will expect, we don't have yield results yet. Uh, the plots are still standing in the field. Uh, we are waiting for things to dry down better. But the predictions or the projections that I can push forward in corn are a little bit conservative. And mm -hmm. I will say that uh, we should be uh, maximizing our yield for the corn crop uh, with the May 11th or the April 26th planting date 
which overlaps with the recommended planting dates for the state uh, of Ohio. For soybean, I think, again, this is a prediction. I haven't heard much about yields yet in this particular study, but my prediction for Northwest Ohio and Western Ohio is that our first two planting dates are probably gonna be the highest yielding. So that April 12th to April 26th will probably be, I'm gonna say the same yield and the highest at those two locations. Uh, our Worcester location in Northeast Ohio had a very poor stand for our early planting dates. Uh, so for Northeast Ohio, I'm going to predict our best planting date there was May 11th. If those predictions hold true, that will kind of suggest that soybeans should be planted first, at least at the northwest and the western stations, given that my prediction was late April, early May. We will see what we can learn from this year. Again, combines are out and rolling uh, for soybeans primarily now and uh, corn is on deck. Mm -hmm. So we will see what, uh, what we are finding out on this year one of, of the study. We are looking forward into repeating this experiment in 2024 and potentially in 2025 as well. We know that the big piece is weather and uh, that might be influencing what results are we mm -hmm. seeing on any given year, on any given location, on any of the two crops. If you would like to learn more and uh, figure out which crops are we recommended to be planted first, uh, you can stay connected with us. We will be pushing more updates uh, as far as uh, winter programming. We will have uh, focus uh, programs that will be looking into battle for the belt. Just uh, stay tuned uh, with those. We will be presenting the results of year one, including yield information, some of the disease assessments, uh, looking at into some of the weather variation that we had this year that might have benefited one way or the other. On the screen, those are the best ways uh, to connect. Uh, we have the corn newsletter articles that come almost every week for the growing season. More of those will come as we approach winter time. There is also uh, the YouTube channel, OSU Agronomy. There is uh, the list of videos that we have been uh, working through this uh, crop season. And uh, Laura and I, we are also on Twitter. There are our accounts and we try to push as much as possible some of the updates on this project over there as well. Thanks again for following us uh, this growing season and we look forward to seeing you this winter at our Battle for the Belt meetings across the state.